Hi everyone, today we're going to go through a few NumPy exercises that deal with indexing and array manipulation such as slicing, splitting, and concatenating. So you can actually follow along interactively by downloading the two Python notebooks that I have uh, as links in the description. So the first notebook is an exercise notebook that has all of these exercises and questions but no solutions. And then the second notebook has all of these solutions. So I'm actually going to be uh, building these solutions out for you in this video. So you can open up these notebooks in either Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colabs. And in this case, I'm actually using Google Colabs. All right, so let's get started. Let's first import NumPy's as NP. So we're just gonna import the NumPy library. So some of this code has already been been basically typed out for you. Uh, what we want to do is create three arrays, x1, x2, and x3. So we're going to do that right now, and we're going to seed it with a value of 1. So you should be getting the same numbers that, that I'm getting because the seeds are exactly the same. So if we execute this, let's just see if it worked. I want to print out x1. 1, x2, and x3. So I'm just going to actually do x1. And then what I'm going to do is create another code block here, x2, and then a third code block, x3. So that way I can just print out things uh, and keep it well organized. So just like this code up here, I have a one dimensional array with nine elements that span 0 to 10 or 0 to 9. In reality and then I have a multi-dimensional array a 3 by 3 array again um, spanning values 0 to 9 and then I have a three-dimensional array um, 5 by 4 by 3 spanning values 0 to 9 so we're gonna we're gonna be playing with these three arrays for for uh, this notebook so the first question and uh, this is going to be dealing with array attributes. Basically, let's just see what some of these dimensions, sizes, and shapes of these arrays are. So the first question is really print the end dim shape and size attributes of x2, which is the this array right here, this three, three by three array. The print code has already been created for you. So much of this has already been created for us. All we want to do is call up that attribute. Right, and so this is pretty easy because the example, uh, the, the solution is basically baked into this, this print statement. Also, if you refer back to some of my videos and, the, and download that notebook, it has almost exactly the same, the same code, the, the same variables and attributes that we're gonna be calling uh, today in this exercise. So you can use those two things basically as cheat codes. So in order to get this going, we're going to call the array and then we're going to call the attribute. We want the end dim and that's just as easy as typing in end, end dim. Same thing with the shape. We want basically the array and then the shape. So the shape attribute and then we want the array again x2 and the size attribute to get that size. So if we run all of this, we should get exactly um, what we are hoping for which is, let me actually print out the x2 array so you can see it uh, side by side. We get uh, ndim, which is two. All it means is it's a two by two, it's a two dimensional array, which is exactly what this is. It has rows and it has columns. It does not have a Z axis. Uh, the shape is the three by three, which is three rows to three columns. And the size really corresponds to the number of elements, the number of values within this array, which is nine elements, right? Three times three equals nine. So th that's the answer the, to the first question. And now we want to find out what the data type is. We know what the data type is because uh, we can look at these numbers. We know they're integers. So if we just type in x2, which is the array and d type, it should say int. And that's exactly what it says, int64, which is a 64-bit um, integer. 
Yours might will probably say 64. It might say 32 in some cases. That's completely fine. Also, the mo most important thing is that it is an integer. And so now uh, bytes, item size and and bytes. Basically, item size is the number of bytes within a particular value in the array, and then the end bytes is the size of the total array as a whole. So we're gonna call up the x2 array, and then I'm just gonna call up the item size. And then for this bottom one here, I'm gonna call up x2, and I'm gonna call up byte size, end bytes. And that's exactly what we get. We get eight bytes per value per element. We know it's a three by three array, so there's nine values in this array. And so when you multiply eight bytes times nine elements in your array, you're gonna get 72 bytes. That's the size of the entire array. So the math works out. So that's just a very quick and dirty exercise for array attributes. So now let's just go to accessing single elements within this array. So array indexing. So we have an X1 array that we built already at the top. So if I just print that out, I get this array here that has, I think 10 elements, is that right? Let me just go to the top. Yep, 10 elements, or sorry, nine elements between one, uh, between zero and nine. Let's see, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's right, okay. So the first question is, print the first element in X1. The first element is five, right? So the answer should be five. So how do we do, do this programmatically? How do we just access the first element in any array? Well, to do it for X1, we know that the position of the first element is always zero in Python. Python always starts positioning as zero. So this first position, this first index is position zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call up X1, which is the, the array, and I'm gonna have brackets, solid brackets around um, the position, and the position I'm gonna type in zero, that's the first position, and it's five, right? What if I wanted the fifth element in X1? Well, the fifth element is one, two, three, four, five. It is zero right here, and so if we count the positions, and we know that Python starts with a zero position, we know that it's one, zero, one, two, three, four right here, and then five, six, seven, eight. So actually it's position four that we want. So print the fifth element, it's position four. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call up the array and we're gonna ask to display the fourth position which corresponds to the fifth element, which should be zero, right? So just, if you didn't catch what I said, I'm gonna write it out to print the fifth element of an array, we want to type in the fourth position. And we, it's the fourth position because Python, sorry, starts their index with zero. All right, zero, one, two, three, four. Fourth position, fifth element. That is very, very important for like the entire exercise. All of the other exercises uses the same concept. Let's move on to the second exercise. Print the second to last element of X1 using negative indices. So the second to last element we know is going to be seven. We want a seven out of it. Um, and so using negative indices just means that we wanna use negative numbers in these position values. So negative, we wanna use a negative number um, we know from the past videos that I've done that 
negative one means the last element in the array and negative two means the second to last element in that array. So we want the second to last element. So we're gonna just do x1 brackets negative two and that should give us seven. There you go, you get seven. So that's how you call up the second to last element in the x1 array. So now let's talk about multi-dimensional array indexing and do the, the exercises there. So let's actually call up x2, which is a three by three array. And the question that we have right here is print the element at position zero two of x2. So zero two, and where is zero two? So re remember that in uh, in these parentheses, the value, the first value is always the row, and the second value is always corresponding to the column. So we know that the first column or the first row is it corresponds to zero. So this is the first row right here, and then the the third sorry, the second position column is actually really the third uh, position, which is this, this column right here, 447. And let me explain that to you again, because Python starts with an index of zero, which is this, zero, one, two, the two index is actually the third column, right? So we are expecting to output a four because we want the first row of the third column. So how do we do that? Well, it's just x2 to call up the array and a zero for the first row and a two for the third column. That should give us a four. There you go. The next question is print the second element of the last row of x2 using positive and negative indices. So print the second element of the last row. So the last row is this. The second element is four. And we want to use positive and negative indices. So, I mean, this could be done in several ways. Let's actually just do it the way they're asking. We're gonna call x2 and we're gonna put two values in, in this, um, in this index. So what we want is the last row. So what is the last row using positive and negative indices? I'm actually going to use a negative number because the last row to get the last row, I know it's just negative one. And then the second parameter in this index has to be the column parameter. And it's, it's asking for the second element, which is the second row. So what is the second row? The second row is right, or sorry, what is the second column? The second column is this, two, two, four. That, and this is position zero and this is position one, right? And so I'm just gonna put a one. So it's the last row, negative one, and it's the last, it's the, it's the second column, which is um, index of one. That should give me a four. There you go. So I mean, another another way of doing this, if you don't wanna do like, you know, positive and negative indices, if, if you just already know what this array is and you want that four, you know, the, the, the row index would be zero, one, two, so it would be a two, and then you want the second column, which is gonna be a one, and that should give you a four also, exactly that. So these are using two positive indices. So there's two ways to, to answer this question. So now what we want to do is we want to assign a value of 25 to the first element of the last row of x2. So let me just display what x2 looks like again. Three by three array, um, what it's asking uh, to replace a value of 25 to the first element in the last row. So the last row is this one right here of x2. And so the first element is going to be a two, right? So we know that position, um, the, the last row is going to be negative one, and then the first element would basically be zero, right? The first column, the index would be zero. 
So if, I, if I'm gonna call the last row, an easy way of doing that would just be negative one. And then an easy way of calling the first element or first column is just typing in zero. So let's just see what we get if we do that. We get 25, exactly where we want it to be, right? 